This is an Ion Annapolis bonus podcast. Well, I'll tell you, unless you've been living under a rock for uh, maybe in a nunnery for the past quarter century or so, you do know our guest today from either the Opie and Anthony show, maybe the last comic standing or appearances on every single late night show, his own stand up act, or maybe XM radio. But Jim Norton, welcome. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you doing? Good. I'll tell you, before we get into it, Ram's Head on stage, Saturday, April 13th is the place to be, 8 p.m. Tickets are still available, not many of them, but you can get them at ramsheadonstage.com. And I'll tell you, if I was anywhere else, I might say only the crappy seats remain because there's not that many, but there is not a bad seat in the house at Ram's Head. It's such a great room. Yeah, I've done it before. I loved it. I think I've done this. Is there a couple? There's one in Baltimore, too, I think I did, which is also great. Yeah, yeah, that's a little bit of a larger room, but this one is 300 people. It's real tight. You're up close and personal, and if, if you're horrible, they can throw stuff at you and actually hit you. Well, that's the advantage to a smaller room, but the advantage to a bigger room is there's a balcony for them to rain things down on you, and it's always great because you don't see those stuff coming. So it's I, if I was going to be hit, I think I'd rather not see it coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you, know, you are such a versatile entertainer from you know TV to stand-up to radio. Uh, Christ, you even wrote a book or two. What are you going to be bringing to Annapolis on the 16th? Um, well, I've been doing the acts for a little while. It's, I think it's a good hour. It's a, it's a new hour. I think it just talks a lot about my personal life. Um, but it's always an updated hour. It's always new. Uh, it won't be the same thing when I was there a couple of years ago. So anybody who saw me, this will be new material. And I just cover what's going on. I mean, uh, my own life, what's happening in the world, it's kind of... Uh, and I hope people like it. You know, it's been going good. I haven't been bombing with it. So I do hope that people uh, come and, and I'm very happy with how it's turned out. That's awesome. Well, I know we, um, uh, actually a buddy of yours, uh, Paul Mercurio was down here a couple months ago or a month oh, ago. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. He killed it. So I, I expect nothing less from an, another New York comic. So I, I mean, Annapolis, I worked with Bobby Slayton at the Annapolis Dinner Theater many, many years ago. And he got punched in the face because, uh, you know, Bobby can be a little abrasive if the crowd, if the crowd annoys him. And he called some woman a cunt. And um, I think I think she punched him or her husband punched him. But yeah, that was my that's my fondest Annapolis memory is Bobby saying, "Where were you?" I was in the back trying to hit on a waitress and uh, <laughs> punched in the face called someone a cunt. She's the best. You know, I love I love comic stories. Do you know Craig Shoemaker by chance? I do, yeah, yeah. He's okay. of mine. Well, Craig, Craig and I, I mean, I say we grew up together, but we were both uh, outside of Philadelphia, and I worked at a club where he was uh, putting together the the comedy thing. And uh, Pat Godwin, you know him by chance? Sure, I do, yeah. Okay, well, Pat was headlining, and somebody was heckling the shit out of him, and he just got to the point where he had enough, and off the stage he went, and Craig's like, oh, shit, man, this, you can't do this. <laughs> right. <laughs> Physically, did he confront the guy physically? I don't think he got to the point where he laid hands on, but he was, if, if he had gotten there, he would have. Yeah. Sometimes somebody just annoys you so much that you want to, it, it's almost worth it. Uh, although nowadays there's so many cameras and shit, you can't get away with anything. Oh, I know, man. Thank God I'm old and didn't have to grow up with that. That's for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm glad I wasn't a teenager. Uh, a young, a young uh, emo Jim Norton with Twitter when I was 16. <laughs> <laughs> I read somewhere that you had wanted to be a comedian since age 12. Is that true? Yeah, watching Richard Pryor. Uh, Man. But that kind of focused what I wanted to do. Um, you know, plus it was it was the only way girls noticed me because I was I always bike blink a lot. I always had kind of a fat neck. So, you know, nobody was throwing fucking uh, sex at me. Well, not that I wanted it when I was 12, but I had crushes and they would, the girls would always like me because I made them laugh. Um, even though I was still the shit guy friend, but at least I got some attention. So, yeah, I really, <laughs> I'm like, hey, man, this gets girls to notice me. What would have happened if you had sucked at comedy? What would you be doing? I mean, uh, well, I'm still doing it. So I would say I would probably still be doing it. I, I don't know what I would be doing. To be, I can't pick up a high school dropout. I had forklift jobs 30 years ago. So I, I can't picture anything that would have uh, that would have been able to uh, step in place of comedy. 
you know, I, I mean, I love somebody that sets a goal and goes for it, man. Yeah, yeah. It's all it, plus a high school dropout. There's really not many options. You've you've been doing comedy for like almost a quarter century, or maybe just over a quarter century. But, no, well, thirty years. Yeah. I mean, it's so dicey right now. I mean, you got this whole cancel culture and everything else that's going around. I mean, you, your programs are canceling in a heartbeat. I read a, a thing. Um, I guess it was in Vox a couple of years ago where the comedians were like, "No, I won't do a college because you know they found that YouTube clip from." a show I did in 1972 where I said, you know, fag. Right. What's your opinion on this whole environment that we're in now with comedy? I mean, it's all fake. I mean, the anger is all fake. The outrage is all fake. It's just everyone is their own broadcast network now because everyone has Twitter and TikTok. So everyone has this little central platform and they're all the king of a very small little world. So what happens is we all want people to see it our way. Um, so if somebody says something objectionable, everybody gets on their microphone on their own broadcast network and they let you know why it's wrong that you did that. You know, it's just, you know, 300 million people screaming at each other. It's all shit. And none of it's real. It's all pretend. We're watching 300 million people act in a play that nobody has read the script for. You know, I, I don't understand why somebody would go to any comedy show and be upset that something may have upset them. You know, I just pray that I'm not picked on. Right. Well, they're upset because they want the pow They want the attention of being upset. A friend of mine used a great phrase, rage porn. It's rage porn. It's everyone gets off to being angry and indignant. You know, it's really embarrassing. Uh, if you don't like a show and you say, hey, I'm going to leave now, pay your check and get the fuck out. Like, that's your option. If it's that upsetting, get yeah, out. Just go home and be around your shitty family and uh, and tell them about it. I mean, who the fuck cares? Who's hot for you then now? With the, uh, besides your wife, but I mean, uh, what comedians are hot? Oh, people who I think are funny? Yeah. Um, Erica Rhodes, uh, works with me on the road is, uh, very funny. There is a kid in Austin, Texas named Casey. I wish I could remember. Hold on. Let me look him up. Uh, I'll tell you his name. He's really, oh, Casey Rocket, his name is, um, Casey Rocket is very enjoyable. And that's, so a, it, that's a baseball name, man. It really is, but he's very, uh, high strung on stage. And he's uh, very creative and funny. And and uh, William Montgomery is another funny fucking dude out of Texas. Cool. What do you think about the uh, the TikTokers that are coming through? I mean, you look at Taylor Tomlinson, who just like crushed it with uh, Cole Barron or Night Show, and uh, Kelsey Cook. Do you like what do you what do you think about these these comics that have come up this way? Well, Kel Kelsey, I love. I mean, she toured with me for a few years, so Kelsey's a good friend. So. I'm not surprised. I mean, I knew she was funny. We worked together. She would always do well. She was creative. She was really true to herself on stage. And she was very funny. So, like, I'm not at all surprised Kelsey is doing well. And and Taylor, the same thing. I mean, I don't know her that well. But uh, she's funny. And uh, she's good on camera. So I don't mind TikTokers. Like, hey, look, anything, if, if there's 2 million people responding to your video and I'm performing in front of 300 you win. Like, who the fuck am I? <laughs> who the fuck am I to say that you're not valid? Like, you know what I mean? I, a lot of comedians annoy this, me with, oh, these fucking YouTubers. It's like, yeah, but if they have, maybe they're not good for an hour on stage, fair. But how? who are we to say who the fuck can do stand-up? Oh, uh, they're infiltrating. What do you think comedians have done to acting? How many actors miss out on jobs because, you know, Jim Carrey took a role or other, Kim Pryor, Eddie Murphy, all stand-ups, that took acting roles. So where comedians are in no position to complain about social media people. I don't care who, however get someone gets famous. I don't give a shit. Who's the Dalai Lama or the mother Teresa comedy for you? I mean, what, what my favorite, like, there's no one, there's no one that's, I, I is, is uh flawless, but I mean, do you mean my favorite comic or like the highlight for me? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who's, who's the ultimate comic for Jim Norton? Richard Pryor. Um, George Carlin is right behind him as well as Robert Klein and um, Woody Allen uh, as a stand-up, probably the best joke writer to ever live. So those four, I, I don't really have one answer. Pryor is probably just the, you know my favorite uh, because he was very vulnerable on stage. But the other three are also just great. And I love all three of them. We've just lost so many great, ones not uh, you know it's way too early i mean you know we talked about we talked about prior and carlin i mean carlin was pretty old i saw one of his final shows it was fantastic yeah 
you know, but I mean, Mitch Hedberg, Belushi, Farley. Oh, I know. I mean, you can even go back to Lenny Bruce and shit like that. But I mean, I mean, there was some brilliant stuff that is out of the comedian world. Yeah, comedians are, you know, volatile idiots. So it's not surprising that we do drugs or, you know what I mean? Like comics, uh, we're, we're messes. So comedians either die in their 40s or they live to be 96. And, and it's funny. I got to ask, but I, and I know you're good friends with Ozzy and Sharon Osbourne. What's the deal with you and De Niro? Well, I mean, he's been very nice to me. I mean, I love him. He, um, I did a, a, a little part in a film where I was helping him write jokes. And then he opened my special and he spanked me and introduced me to the audience. Like, it was crazy. Then... He recommended me to, I think, Scorsese, and they like they had me play Rickles in The Irishman. So De Niro's invited me to like family parties. Like he has been extremely nice to me. So I love him. There is a VIP meet and greet before the show when you come in on Saturday the thirteenth. Yes. Any any chance of anybody getting to smack your naked ass on at this one? All of them can. Whoever buys a VIP. Greet. You can slap my ass, but yeah, but we have a lot of people, so it's a limit of twenty five minutes each. Okay, twenty smacking my ass before the show for everyone. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now we know what Jim Norton's into. All right. Good. <laughs> no, no, I don't even like it. I'm just a good guy. I hate it. All right, man. I'll tell you, I'm going to I'm going to let you go, but I want to thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, sir. I can't wait to see you on the 13th here in Annapolis. And again, there's not a lot, but there's a few tickets left. Ramsheadonstage.com. You definitely want to check out jimnorton.com as well. Thank you. If anybody's listening to me here that wants to go to the show that has a free Saturday night that you're not going to forget for a long time, get in touch with me. I got two pairs of tickets and they're in great seats to see Jim uh, right here in Annapolis, man. Thank you. All right, man. So you have a safe trip down. I don't know whether you're flying, driving, or training, but however you get here, have a safe trip. And we're going to see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks a lot. This has been a bonus podcast from Eye on Annapolis. Please visit us at ionanapolis.net. Follow us on Facebook at All Annapolis and on Twitter at Eye on Annapolis. And if you haven't subscribed to the Daily News Brief podcast, go for it. And all of your local news will be delivered to your phone, tablet, or smart device by 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday.